Why is it important to take your new dancing bird to the vet? Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Bliss Bond, and I have a couple other books. My latest book is Feathered Splendor, which has 20 different species that I talk about with pictures of 40 different species, all in color. Fabulous book. Now, um, you can catch that on Amazon. Today I am joined by Miss Towelston Hang. They should be on the floor, also known as Rosie, our green wing macaw. And Max right here, my Cape Parrot. Why should you take your parrot, your new squawky parrot to the vet? Here's something that you may not know that makes a really big difference. When you bring home an expensive parrot, one of the things is you wanna have a blissful bond. You wanna have a, a companion that you're gonna be sharing your life with. These guys are so smart. They know what you're thinking, I think half the time, probably more. They know if you're not home, they know when you're coming home. They just read your thoughts, don't you? Yes, okay, yes. And you can't help but bond, and that's the whole idea, right? You wanna have a just huge loving relationship and have this best feathered friend kind of thing. So you bring this parrot home, and you may not know that every time you or a parrot changes environment. It's a new biosphere, I believe is the word that's used. But what that means ah. is, as far as bacteria goes in the environment, it's different. Maybe it's not all different, but it's different. So a parrot, when they change homes, they undergo the stress of having everything change. I mean, can you imagine living however long, for example, in Rosie's case, the first six years of your life in one place with one group of people, she actually has had two homes. Look at him. He's so playful. Hi, sweetie. Hi. I know. I know. He's so affectionate. And um, she's had two homes, two sets of people, but in six years. And it's not like they went out, I don't think, to the park and to Disneyland and out to dinner. So Rosie was really used to being at home, being in her cage, around her cage, and with her people to suddenly change and have a new home and new people is stressful. I mean, think about it. If you go to like, for example, to a whole new country where you don't understand the language and stuff, it can really be an adjustment. Yes, if you've done it a thousand times or more, you're used to it and it may not stress you out. But it doesn't mean that like the bird comes wanting to pull out their feathers because they're all stressed out, but there is a certain amount of stress to both the physical body and to the emotional self that a parrot is gonna undergo just like you and I would. So when they are stressed out, it reduces their immune system and that means that they are subject to little things, little bacteria, little infections that are probably absolutely no big deal at first. But if they go untreated, it's gonna add up. Parrots, unfortunately, can easily get sick. And if you didn't already know this, they hide their illness really well. When a parrot's not feeling good, a part of what they do is they fluff up so that they look like they haven't lost weight. They try to act normal, except then when they're not feeling well, they do things like go to the bottom of their cage, they don't perch, and they just kind of huddle up and kind of try to be cozy, keep themselves warm. But Sometimes, by the time they're at that stage, it's really bad. So, if you just take your parrot to the vet and you have your parrot, your vet at least run like a gram stain and a culture, that's two basic tests. They shouldn't be too expensive. For a couple of hundred dollars, your vet should be able to see your parrot, do a physical, and do the gram stain and the culture and just nip in the bud anything that might have been wrong. That means that you are guaranteeing yourself not necessarily a perfectly healthy parrot, and I'll talk about that in one second, but a parrot who is far more likely to not have any infections and be healthy enough so that they're gonna be in a good place to bond with you, and that's what you're after. Now, why do I say not necessarily like perfectly healthy? 
because just like us, there are a lot of other diseases in addition to infections that parrots can get. They can get viruses, um, they, can, they can get stuff. And when your vet checks for that um, infection, they aren't checking for everything under the sun. If they were gonna check for everything under the sun, it would probably cost you, I don't even know how much. I don't even know if they can check for everything and anything that a parrot could get, but they certainly can check for sort of like the usual suspects. And those usual suspects, for example, beak and feather, PDD, uh, chlamydia, I think is the correct word, just off the top of my head, Pacheco's disease, there are like at least eight um, basic, quote unquote basic, common diseases that the parrots can get. Some of those tests aren't gonna be too expensive, but when your vet's running them, some of them are, and all in all, you know, I, I don't know how much money you'd be spending. You'd be spending quite a bit. And it's a bit of an overkill. When your vet looks at your parrot, they can, generally speaking, see if there's any major red flags. And if there is, a infection and it doesn't go away or like a really bad infection those are going to be red flags to your vet hopefully letting them know that maybe they need to dig a little deeper so these are really good things also to know when you first get your parrot because let's say you find out that your parrot does heaven forbid have something else that is the time right after you brought them home when you want to go back to the seller and go hey there's a problem right that's your chance if you wait six months your parrot has already been exposed. I mean, honestly, for me, like when I sell some of my babies, I feel like the minute they walk out the door, I don't know what the person's exposing them to. Like maybe when they get in the car, they have another bird in the car. I feel like exposure can happen anywhere at any time. And like I said, even if they're not exposed to any other animals, there's different bacteria in every place. And so it's really hard to say, where a parrot got sick. So checking in with your vet right away is the smartest thing to do and the best way to do the best you can to try to guarantee that you are starting out on the right foot to have that blissful bond. I took Orabella. I'm so glad I did because I saw a sign and she just has a little bit of E. coli. They're like, you know, it's just not much, but I'm gonna go and pick up her meds first thing when they open tomorrow morning because it was too late to go today. I'm always right on top of any meds because I don't prefer to medicate my parrots if I don't have to, I won't. But if they have something, I wanna get rid of it like that to make sure that I keep happy, healthy parrots because an unhappy parrot is going to be going downhill, first of all, and second of all, they aren't as happy and um, willing to bond with you. They aren't as sweet and friendly. They're gonna be cranky and it's not gonna be as much fun. A healthy parrot, they can't wait. They're always curious about us. If your parrot's not tame, it might take a little longer, but they're curious about us and they want to bond with us just like we want to bond with them. Thank you for joining me in this blissful video. Please be sure to give me one of these and my Mac Monster back there. Who knows? I think she's playing with a piece of wood. And uh, my sweet little Max. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. It helps my juice and I will catch you in the next video. If you need any links, like to my awesome Buddha parrot t-shirt. Please check for my shop at shop.parrotbliss. Oh, check my links below. Oh my goodness, it's the end of the day and it's been a long day. Thanks and I'll catch you next time.